Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed the perfect game. The Dodgers making more roster moves. We have big takeaways from yesterday's win. Shohei Otani has a secret weapon. And what are the biggest Dodgers concerns right now? That's coming up next on Dodgers Dugout Live. It's time for Dodger baseball. And that's right three. Dodgers have won it all in 2020. Mookie Betts, Craig Swing, left field. I don't care how many times this team rips my heart out, I'll never stop loving the Los Angeles Dodgers. Think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. What is up, Dodgers Nation? DMAC here. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Today, we've got a jam-packed show for you. We've got the secret sauce for Shohei Otani, a secret weapon. The Dodgers making more roster moves. They acquired a pitcher. We're going to get into that. We've got our big takeaways from yesterday's win. We're talking about some roster moves they could make. What are the Dodgers' biggest concerns right now? Of course, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell hit that like button and also be sure to comment done down below comment done down below so you make sure you're eligible for our next giveaway that hits at 90,000 subscribers of course dodgers dugout live monday through friday in the mornings everything you need to know about the dodger baseball in less than an hour so definitely be sure to rock with us every single morning the number one dodgers show on youtube and it's all thanks to you and also we know we have to kick off every single show with the dodgers nation poll question of the day the Dodgers dugout live poll question of the show I asked you guys over on the X if you need a base hit which current Dodger do you most want at the plate and right now 32% of you say Mookie Betts 25% of you say Freddie Freeman 36% of you say Shohei Otani and 7% are saying Will Smith so I would expect Will Smith the clutch prince to be a little higher on that a little disappointed by that but still if you haven't yet go vote over on the x and then a little later on the show we got a little segment designated twitter where i asked you guys what is your biggest concern so far early on here in the dodgers season but la they get the win again yesterday they beat the minnesota twins by a final score of four to two la improves to nine and four on the year and really the story of the game yeah james paxton really solid outing shohei otani goes deep again and James Alma goes deep. But before we get into that, I want to start with something. Yesterday was the solar eclipse. I don't know if you watched the solar eclipse. I saw this over on Reddit. Today was the sixth total solar eclipse visible in the United States to take place during a major league regular season. And in that span, the Dodgers are the only team to go undefeated on days where there is a solar eclipse. The Dodgers are now 6-0 and during solar eclipse days. The first one coming on May 28, 1900. The Brooklyn Super Bowls. You beat the Chicago Orphans by a final score of 12-7. to Another one, June 18th, 1918, the Robins beat the Pirates. August 31st, 1932, the Dodgers beat the Reds 7 to 1. July 20, 1963, Dodgers beat the Braves 5 to 4. Then how about August 21st, 2017, the Dodgers beat the Pirates on a score, final score of 6 to 5. And then yesterday, of course, the Dodgers they beat the Minnesota Twins 4 to 2. So my big question is this: Why can't we have a solar eclipse in October? Why can't we have 11 solar eclipses in October, right? I mean, we're in Hollywood. Maybe you put a big soundstage around Dodgers. 
stadium. You kind of fake it, make a fake one, but still really cool statistic, a very odd statistic nonetheless. But drop those comments down below. Let me know where you're representing Dodgers Nation from. Give me those cities down below in the comment section. Any hot takes, any big questions you have for me, drop those down below. I've got my super producer, Antonio, to my left. He's looking for all the best comments. All the super chats will immediately be answered, and you'll see on the screen now. So be on the lookout for that, and you'll get also get featured in the seventh inning stretch. We answer all of your questions. But I want to dive into some questions from you guys. We've got the 805 in the house, Denny Cortez. Good morning, Dodgers fan. We got Steven Blevins listing from Visalia, California. Remember the Oaks, the Visalia Oaks, the minor league affiliate of the A's you play there. Echo Park rep, that's from Met Metabolic. We got Greg Osterberg, Lawndale, California. Ernesto Avila from Compton. Lorenzo from El Paso, Cal Texas. We got one Dragon 510. Hector represent Dodgers Nation from Fresno. We got BT Fouls loving the sunshine here in Pasadena. Yeah, our lovely studios here in the 91030 South Pasadena. Beautiful day outside. Working in downtown Riverside from Denny Cortez. Northridge 818 in the house from Jason Diamond. Will Allen Jr. What up, Doug? 805 Ventura County. Yo, from La Puente, DMAC. What up, Pablo? What up, David? Otani is going to end bad, I feel. Such a town. What are you talking about? I think it's going to end good. Jose Villanueva. What up, DMAC? We got Green Bay, Wisconsin in the house. A shout out to the Packers. Shout out to the Acme Packing Crew. Listening from New York. What up, Carnivorous Lunar Activity? Richard H. Lancaster, repping from Bakersfield. So, yeah, settle in to the comment section because we're going to get right into it. Now, the first big up. So, we do some three up, three down, three things I liked, three things I didn't like from the Dodgers 4-2 win over the Twins, not just to the Dodgers win, all things Dodger baseball. So three things I liked, three things I didn't like. And the first thing I really liked was how about James Paxton? Big Maple, he was solid yesterday. He went out there, he got the win, improved it 2-0 on the season, went six innings, gave up just two runs, had four strikeouts on three hits, threw 86 pitches, 55 for strikes. His ERA on the season is is down to 1.64. Now, the most important thing yesterday was not just that he went out there and he pitched six strong, gave up two runs. It was that he gave the Dodgers a much needed length because the bullpen had pitched over 60% of the innings last week. And the Dodgers, as potent as their offense is, as explosive as their offense is at the top, you still win with starting pitching. So far this season, the Dodgers are 8-1 when they're starting pitching goes at least five plus innings they're four and oh when their starting pitcher goes at least six frames so if you don't go five innings this season in your Dodgers starter, you're really putting this team behind the eight ball because so far this season, when their starter doesn't go five innings, they are one in three on the season. Last season, it was the same recipe for success. They had gone 79 and 37 with a 681 win percentage when their pitcher went at least five plus. So that is the recipe to the Dodgers success. Can you get your starting pitcher to go out there and put in a honest day's work to go out there and say, you know what? I'm posting today. I'm going five I'm going six I'm gonna grind through this even if I don't have my best stuff James Paxton feels like an adult is out there on the mound a veteran is out there on the mound someone who when he's healthy he has a lot of success last season despite all the injuries he averaged over five innings per start so James Paxton is someone who really puts this Dodgers team in a really good spot to go out there get length you love that fastball up in the zone the carry it has the way it can neutralize righties and lefties it's a fastball just gets on you and that's what makes it a really special pitch I think yesterday the big standout with his start was he had the curveball working the curveball was an effective pitch for him but really a really solid start there not great weather conditions for big maple you have a tough heavy right-handed lineup for the Minnesota Twins he goes out there and he gets the job done he threw one cutter in the game exactly one cutter and it hung and Manuel Margot hit it out for a two-run home run so made one mistake other than that though he's been really really solid and I feel really good that's definitely an up gotta give him an up on that one Mr. James Paxton if you look at his numbers 
through two starts. Like I said, 164 ERA. The FIP high, 442. Strikeout numbers aren't as great as you want, 20%. Walk rate a little high at 13.3%. But I feel really good about the start of the season. I think you just need a couple really good starts to get the ball rolling. Also, kudos to that Dodgers bullpen. You had Ryan Braves, you had Daniel Hudson, you had Evan Phillips. All went perfect. All went scoreless. Dodgers pitchers. They retired 18 straight to finish out the game. So they were really outstanding. So the first down, the first down has to be the strike zone to Mookie bets. I mean, John Trump Payne, this is just absolutely, absolutely terrible. What we saw yesterday, if you want to queue up the the Mookie Betts missed calls because you had fastballs just three, four inches off the plate. At top of the third, that ball was called a strike. It was a ball. I don't know what John Trumpain has against Mookie Betts, but that was absolutely awful. That was terrible. You just can't have that. You can't have that. I mean, just look at right here. Look at some of these calls. I mean, that's off the plate. That is off the plate. And I don't know, oh Mike, to strike him out there, a MVP, a future Hall of Famer in Mookie Betts, and you are having a strike zone as wide as the wide, as wide as the Grand Canyon. I mean, it's unacceptable that a major league umpire can go out there and make these atrocious calls. Let's run it back here. I mean, this is, does the plate have wheels? Does he have an early dinner reservation? I don't know what he's doing, but look, I can see him making that call to a rookie, an inexperienced player, a young guy. We're talking about Mookie Betts, one of the most respected players in all of Major League Baseball. And at this point, my big takeaway is, look, we can cry and moan about the umpires all day. They're human. They're going to miss calls. They are at a disservice because you don't have the challenge system. Major League Baseball, you are embarrassing these umpires because fans out there expecting perfection, and it's unrealistic. Give them a challenge system. Allow, I mean, Dave Roberts, he was barking at the umpires. I was impressed with Dave, not wasting any time. Even with Tramel out there, he was yelling at them. And I thought Dave was saying, okay, this is ridiculous. This is unacceptable. And my big takeaway in all this, here's the big picture. You're going to hear everyone, you know, cry and moan about these umpires and for good reason. But the biggest takeaway for me is that, it's going to happen. You are going to get the ABS system. I like this. Angel Hernandez ears are ringing over there. See that comment. You're going to get the challenge system. And when the challenge system is implemented in Major League Baseball, no team is going to benefit like the Los Angeles Dodgers because the way they approach at bats you're not expanding the zone you're not chasing pitches Mookie bets he's not going to be chasing pitches like he doesn't and he's going to benefit from that because we saw in that same game Mookie was having to overextend on pitches out of the zone because he knows that they're going to be called strikes so Mookie is going to benefit good hitters like the Dodgers have are going to benefit when you have this so here's the wild take and I see X and Instagram and everyone's freaking out when you have these bad calls. Yes, I hate it too. And the scorecard is bad, right? John Trumpain, he did a terrible job. But how about this? Think big picture. Let's play a little chess here. The more you have these bad calls, the more these go viral, the more this gets to Major League Baseball, the more that this gets to the umpires. And I think that when you have these bad calls, it's going to encourage change. And once we get to there, the Dodgers will benefit. So I'm almost rooting for some of these bad calls this year just so it makes it happen. Because I'm so, uh, if they're all perfect and they all are calling balls and strikes perfectly this season, they're not going to go to the change. So, look, be the change we need, okay? Come on now. ABS in 2025. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Let's do a little quick run of the comments here. We got a super chat, so let's put that one up there on the screen. This is from Lorenzo Gaddis. We got my super producer, Antonio, working on that. He says, we'll get to that real quick once it's on the screen. But we got a 499. Okay, we got the Dodgers are second lowest favored when it comes, when it comes to umps. They are playing the other team in the umps now. It's Dodgers versus everybody. Now, that is a super chat, by the way. I'm going to pay off Ipe's debts with that Lorenzo. So I appreciate you. And yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the Dodgers, they have been hosed 
multiple times this season and it hurts them because they are good hitters right they're not expanding the zone they're not chasing and thankfully they won yesterday and Mookie still was able to get himself a hit but great point hey Dodgers versus everybody and, you know I think just in general not even just the umps it feels like the Dodgers versus the world this season because everyone thinks LA they bought baseball they ruined baseball because they broke baseball because they signed Otani and Yamamoto and they have this super team so I'm here for that let's have that mentality let's have that mindset we got justin lamas in the chat what up justin we got i like this this is from keith potter over on youtube villains but he's got the la capitalized i love that justin kim 2000 here's my hot take hyung to Choi will be like an emmett sheehan and will skip triple a to make the dodgers roster otani wasn't squeezed hey man otani's the hottest hitter on the planet right now we'll talk about him in a second fire the umps and robert that's from ja had to fit that in there lj no challenge system robo ump no need to delay the game lose a challenge then bag calls the rest of the game we have it here in the minors and you don't know it yeah look if you want to go to complete robo ums i'd be for that i'm just not so sure they would the major league baseball when you look at their history that they'd be willing to make such a dramatic drastic change i think it'll be step by step i think you'll see abs and then i think ultimately you'll go to the complete robo ump i mean just look at it in tennis i mean when the ball hits the line in tennis one it's exciting because you want to see the digital tennis ball hit that line it's precise and accurate i think it adds another element of engagement to fans i mean one of my favorite things about watching a nfl game is you can be anywhere you can be at a bar you can be with your friends anytime there's the red flag is shown and it's oh was it a fumble oh was it an interception anytime that red flag shown every single person in that room they become a football expert for that one to two minutes right it's the most fun thing in the world to hear the referee tell you the results so i think you can have that element as well i think it's even more engaging but uh what's up with emmett he's sharp yeah he's on the 60 day il and he's he's making strides for sure we'll talk about him if you want in the uh, seventh inning stretch but uh, we got missed the dirt kicking it added drama to the game yeah alan unfortunately the game's evolved you're not really seeing that as much and i'm with you i mean i think you're still going to see it every now and then but uh, yeah, I haven't seen as much. Woke up to DMAC live. Hell yeah. Shout out from Orange County, Mac. What up, TKO1503? Thanks for rocking with us here in the mornings. Yeah, wherever you guys are at, this show, Monday through Friday, we're back to our normal schedule here. Dodgers dugout live, Mondays through Fridays. Mondays, Monday through Friday in the mornings here. All you need to know about Dodger baseball. We got Choice of Beast. What an awesome brew baker. By the way, awesome brew baker. I saw you post that uh, that video of you on the news there uh, before the Great Lake Loons open. I thought that was really cool. I thought you killed it with that. So, yeah, man, keep doing your thing. We got uh, Elias over there. What up, DMAC Dunn, North Hollywood. North Hollywood in the house. What's up, Diane Schroeder? Yo, DMAC watching at work right now. Yeah, guys, sorry to your bosses, but uh, this is more important, right? Dodger baseball. Nothing takes a back seat. Benjamin, DMAC listening from Crown Town, Corona. We got Pablo says, F the pitch clock. Yeah, Pablo Ramos. Tell him how you really feel. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So next one for my up. Let's go up right here. The next one for the up, James Outman. James Outman breaks through. And he hits a home run yesterday. And I think the most important thing is James Alman has been hitting the ball hard. He has been lifting the ball, but he hasn't gotten the results. And James Alman, no one's going to outwork this guy. No one's going to outwork Altman. And it was only a matter of time that he was going to leave the yard. And heading into that home run yesterday, he was four for his last 34 to start the season. He had a 37.5% strikeout rate before hitting his first bomb of the year. Jay hits it off. Jay Jackson there in the first, in the seventh inning. Let's try it again. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Boom. And to see James Alman just leave the yard. He needed this. I mean, it was just a little hanging slider. It was on the outer half of the plate. He was allowed to get himself extended, and that allowed him to just find a way to get the ball in the meat of the bat. And I think that he's one of those players who, once he starts to see it and starts to get that extra base hit, you start to see him go off a little bit. And one thing I want to say about James Alman, and people are saying, oh, James Alman and Cody Bellinger, we miss Belly and this and that. Look, James Altman still provides a ton of value 
even if he's struggling at the plate because he's playing at the very least average level center field defense. But if you look at outs above average, look at DRS, he's an above average center fielder defensively. So he's playing a premium position. You're not asking for him to th hit 300, right? If he hits 240, and gives you 20 to 25 home runs and plays above average defense in center field with the kind of money he's making, that is absolutely everything you can ask for for James Outman. I think that he's in a spot where it's been tough for him. I mean, he had sat on the bench in four of the last five games where he had a lefty starter. So you were starting to see some platoon action with James Outman. He needed to have some success, and he finally finds a way to get that home run. Now, a bonus up before you get to the next down is how about an up for the cricket bat? How about an up for the cricket bat? Shohei Otani, he broke out a cricket bat the other day and he also used it yesterday against the Twins and he hits a home run. James Outman, he said that he saw the cricket bat and he picked it up and he took some swings with it and he goes on to hit a home run. Dave Roberts said about the cricket bat, it's supposed to help you have a flat bat, keep your bat hitting in the zone longer. And Otani said it forced him to swing your body more to contact the ball with such a flat surface. So it also engages his lower body and look, whatever works. I will say, though, since it was a cricket bat, I mean, why doesn't it count for six, right? A cricket home run counts for six. We should have gotten more runs for those home runs that Otani and Alma hit. And also, you got to let the bottom of the lineup sleep with that cricket bat. I don't know if it's Gavin Lux or Chris Taylor or James Outman. Hey, whatever works, get the cricket bat out. And big league hitters will tell you, sometimes you just need a switch up, right? You just need to change things up. I was talking to my friend, Mr. J.P. Hornstra. We were talking about when Jock Peterson, he was using the pepper. He was playing pepper back in 2015. It was working for him. You've talked to, talked to big league hitters. Sometimes they'll just change for for the sake of change. I mean, I've heard stories of hitters that are right-handed, don't hit left-handed. They'll go in the cage and they'll hit left-handed just to kind of change the rhythms of the brain as far as it pertains to hitting. So I love that. Shout out to the cricket bat. Like I said, it should count for six runs, <laughs> okay? Because that's what it counts as is a home run in cricket, right? The six. But I love to see that. But a really cool story there. So good practice. It's just good practice keeps you engaged. Now, Next down, got to go with Gavin Lux. Gavin Lux continues to really play really good defense. There's no doubt about that. I think Gavin Lux's defense has been well above average. He made a really nice play yesterday in the fifth, that backhand play he made, one hopped it to Freddie Freeman. Really, really nice work defensively. I have no doubts that he can get it done with the glove at that position. Fortunately, it's not at the uh, at the shortstop position the Dodgers were hoping it would be at, but for him to be able to play second, you feel okay about that. You feel good about that defensively, but offensively, after yesterday, 38 plate appearances, still extremely small sample size. Like I've been saying, you don't pull the plug until you get to at least 150 to 200. That's when you start to explore some options. But he's hitting 167 with a 211 on base, a 194 slug, a 18 weighted runs created plus. The strikeout rate's at 26.3%. The walk rate at 5.3%. Yesterday, he was able to get a hit, but there were also a couple of different opportunities where he had runners on base in the fourth inning. He had two on, two outs. He strikes out looking on a breaking ball down the middle, was looking for something different. And Gavin Lux, you just really want to see him get it going with the bat and finding a way to get on base because really the most concerning thing for me, and I think this also has a lot to do with just a lack of opportunity because he hasn't been on the base pass as, as much, but his sprint speed is at a, the sixth percentile, sixth percentile. We're talking about a guy who a few years ago was one of the fastest guys on the team, and right now it's at 24.3 feet per second if you look at the barrel percentage at the one percentile hard hit percentage 15th percentile strikeout percentage 31 percentile the expected slugs at in the 22nd percentile encouraging thing the expected batting average is close to league average so look you just want to see him string together a couple of games where you're hitting the occasional double but you're just getting on base i mean i think for him it's just about 
trying to find a way to get some singles, find some grass, and get it things going. Because, look, the concerning thing about the bottom of this lineup is there's way too many strikeouts. The ball isn't put in play enough. And if Gavin Lux is struggling, look at Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani has been on a tear on multi-hit games. He's been a doubles machine. Freddie Freeman as well. Mookie Betts. You need guys in the bottom of the lineup that can get on base because of how potent the top of the lineup is. So it's definitely a conversation we're going to continue having. Like I said, this isn't Dodger State TV. I got to keep it a buck. Got to keep it 100 with you guys. And right now it's been small sample size, but haven't loved what I've seen at the plate from Gavin Lux so far. But hey, let's not forget, he is coming back from an injury. It's going to take a little bit of time to find that swing to get those mechanics right. But if he can find it, it makes you wonder, do you have a Miguel Rojas going back to short full time and a Mookie Betts at second? You have Miguel Vargas raking down the AAA level. You have options on this team, and we'll see how things fare for Gavin Lux. Slow start. But very early, if he has a, you know, a really good week, his numbers could totally flip. So here we go. But let's go down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on Gavin Lux? We got let's leave baseball alone. Sound like leave Brady alone. Uh, Doom underscore Sal sub D Mac. By the way, that's a, that's a fire take over there. Fire take. We got uh, John Ulan. Umps should be financially penalized for repeated horrible calls. That's a little much. I definitely think one thing I've been talking about for Bruh. the last couple of years is look why umpires you might want to see them address the media just like players and managers do after the game i would like to see that but really they need a challenge system i mean these guys the way they're positioned behind the catcher just the human eye isn't able to see the plate and the zone as much as they need to and it's unfortunate but they definitely should be graded absolutely i think their grades should be they, i mean we should have a baseball savant page for umpires we should have a baseball reference stat page for umpires so they can at least have a track record of their work that fans can see a little more transparency. AJ, AJ Alexander over on Facebook. There's so much betting on sports and even MLB baseball now. You have to have integrity in the game, and the home plate umpire has been so bad in some instances that it makes many fans suspicious. Are some of these umps that incompetent, or is something else going on? MLB needs to clean up its game. It needs to be, it needs to be above reproach. Hey, look, I mean, I amen to that. That's a fire take. Let me rack him right there. Rack him. So for sure, I like this from Beerus. This is a bro right here. Beerus Salma says 550 people on their bathroom break. <laughs> By the way, if you're here, guys, definitely leave a like. It really helps the channel. Remember, this is your show. I'm just hosting. So hit that like button and also comment down below. Eddie Diaz, Shohei Otani is heating up. Shout out from San Jacinto, California. He's a minor league player. That's from Justin Kim 2000. Outman is streaky. That's from Doc Marty. I still feel really good about James. James Albin, though. I still feel like this is someone who you look at the affordability. I mean, considering that you're not paying him a ton of money, right? I mean, he's still trying to rack up service time. That, those are the kind of guys you win with when you can hit on them, right? I mean, you're talking about someone who's pre arbitration. So you hit on those guys, you can use that money on impact free agents but uh, he strikes out way too much ej before his home run otani talked to him kelly yeah they were talking about a lot of things as far as how the uh, ball was diving into the zone the slider but yeah you love that communication they do that quite a bit he talked about it after the game bc i can see outman and lux to turning it around let's convince ct3 and kike will we'll talk about it a little bit outman was clutch last night dodgers everything yeah he was absolutely clutch he came up there and a big spot for him when you look at the year he's had and is exactly what you needed because the Dodgers at that point, I mean, it's a home run to right and that puts them on top. I mean, it was a tie game at that point. So that put the Dodgers up three, two, Doug, the greatest to ever do it. I'm not kidding. What up, go Yachty? Hey, man, appreciate that, man. Right back at you, man. You guys are the best fans to ever do. I'll tell you that much. Uh, Mr. Seabed, Tausk Hernandez equals the big chorizo. <laughs> that's a fire take. I'm a racket for that. Fire I love chorizo. I mean, that's my go-to breakfast burrito protein, <laughs> I have to say. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, chorizo. Bacon sometimes. Not the huge, not a big sausage, dude. 
in the breakfast burrito. Oh, I love sausage in the morning, dude. Chorizo all day. Yeah, you got to go. No, chorizo for sure. That, that's, by the way, that's super producer, Mr. Antonio guy's killing it over there. Orale. Oh. <laughs> love it. Um, Tommy L.A. Sorta. By the way, fire name here. Late to the show. Have you talked about Adamas yet? We have not talked Willie Adamas. So save that for the seventh inning stretch. So next up, we got to go up. We've talked about him already, but... You got to talk about Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani's on a heater. Shohei Otani is absolutely in his bag right now. His bat's so hot, you could cook a couple eggs off of it right now. I mean, look at the home run yesterday and just look at the strength. Boom! Just absolutely muscles a slider on the outer half, and he just lifts it out with pure strength. I mean, they're only three, four guys that have this kind of strength in Major League Baseball that can hit a home run like this, where you're just taking a slider, you're providing a lot of the power, and it's a cement mixer right there. They try to back foot it. It ends up on the outer half, and he just hits it with a tank. He doesn't know if it's out. A little confused right here. It's kind of cute. Show you a little, a little confused. But he's around the bases, hits his third home run. And I'm old enough to remember when people were thinking that Shohei Otani was struggling, when people were having all these theories about Shohei Otani and the injury recovery and the off the field stuff. Shohei Otani, in his last five games, he's 11 for his last 22 with three home runs, four doubles, and a triple. He now leads all of Major League Baseball with 11 extra base hits. 11 extra base hits for Shohei Otani. How about this? Some history. His next home run will move him into a tie with Japanese legend Hideki Matsui for most MLB home runs all time by a Japanese-born player. So that's very important. That's very significant. So... You got to love that. Shohei Otani just stays on a tear. And I think for me, the big takeaway is he makes it look easy. He makes it look so easy. It's almost like you're surprised at this point when he goes up there and it's not an extra base hit. I mean, you look at early in the game, that double, I mean, scorch that. He absolutely scorched that over Byron Buxton's head right there. And that's what Shohei Otani does. He hits the ball harder than anyone. He just has as much strength as anyone in the game. And that was on display yesterday. You also saw the speed element. But, I mean, you go to any game where Shohei Otani's had a hit, and there's like a 99% chance that he has the hardest hit balls in the game. Yesterday, double in the first inning, 110.1 miles per hour off the bat. That was the hardest hit ball in the game. What was the second hardest hit? Of course, it was a home run in the seventh inning where it was 106.9 miles per hour off the bat. Shohei Otani is going off right now, and he's carrying this Dodgers team offensively. And it's not that he's as advertised or anything like that. This is someone who is always going to be as advertised. And I don't even think it's about being as advertised. He is better. He is better because he has a better lineup around him. And think that is really what takes him to the next level is you have a better lineup, you have more protection, you're seeing better pitches, and you're also just in a better, happier situation. So Otani, it's just I pinch myself sometimes, right? I pinch myself sometimes. It still feels like a dream watching Shohei Otani just rake in a Dodgers uniform, and you got to feel great about it. So I don't think this hot streak may never end. We got uh, people compare him to Barry Bonds. Let's see, we got another super chat here. This is from Lorenzo Gaddis. The most important thing with Outman Homer was that he knows what he saw, meaning he's seeing the ball evident in the Otani home run. James told him what to look for. Teamwork makes the dream work. Exactly. And I think when Outman is right, you're seeing him stay back on breaking balls and doing damage to breaking balls. And then he's a little more confident against fastball. So that's the most important thing. And I agree. He's someone that just kind of feels like a weight's lifted off his shoulder. Now he can really get his season going from a slugging standpoint. Let's not forget. I mean, he went off last season early on in the year and then he slowed down and I think we could see something like that. We got Jack. You guys need to stop praising Lux. Get Miggy Rowe in there instead. That's from Jack over on YouTube. Is a cricket bat legal? <laughs> That's a fire thing. That's from Larry H. Lux needs help with the play. That's from Diane Schroeder. Doc Marty, Lux's days are numbered. I see him gone by the trade deadline. That's from Doc Marty over on YouTube. Lux is coming back from a tough injury. Eric Lopez. Yeah, and I think you have to remember that. But let's not forget, he has options. 
right? You don't have to force him into the role he has now, knowing he's coming back from that injury, right? You can put him in a better spot to get him fully there, get his timing, get his mechanics, get his legs underneath him, and then maybe you set him up for success better because he's having the results and he's building the confidence. So, yes, he is coming back from injury, and that's absolutely considered. And I'm not being overly dramatic here and saying they need to trade Lux or move off of Lux right now, but we just, look, you can't sugarcoat this stuff. It just, it's been a very rough start at the plate for him, and there's nothing uh, around that. Uh, we got Fabian. Bro just needs to play. He watches too much TV and spends a, lo a boatload of time on social media, and that's messing with him. Nando, uh, 390. Lux is like a mixture of, do D <laughs> come on now, uh, of, of, of Sellers, DeWitt, and DJ Peters. Come on, that's a that's a finish him for sure. Uh, we got uh, Boomer Talk. Um, Lux needs to be a brewer soon. That's from Justin Long. Thomas. umpires this is mr seabed umpires union rules with an iron fist nothing will change unless the chains are minimal use the challenge method and be happy i be stroking rock with us what up i be Sto stroking otani had a slow start to the season and leads the league with mookie bets and extra base hits yeah we just talked about a couple minutes ago it's really really impressive to watch him hit we've seen him from afar i don't care how many angels games you watched it's just a different level of understanding his greatness when you see him in your own team's uniform and you're watching him every single day. And there's a reason why he can go down as the best player, the best hitter in Major League Baseball history. The swing is effortless right now. And you're seeing the bat path stay through the zone longer. And I think, hey, if it's the cricket bat, then uh, give him, give the cricket bat all the credit in the world. Bring up Vargas for a three-game series. That's from Hector. It's a hot take. It's a hot take over there. So let's move on here. Another, another down. Another down. I'm gonna go for this one. How about the Chicago Cubs yesterday? They celebrated their World Series win against the Dodgers, and what they do? They blew an eight nothing lead to the Padres the very next day. Fernando Tatis hits that shot. I just think it's funny. And I think it really goes to show that, yeah, every team is going to be gunning for the Dodgers and every team thinks that that's their World Series. So, yeah, how about that Cubs team? But coming up next... The Dodgers acquired Connor Brogdon. What does it mean? How the Dodgers roster shake out with these bullpen pieces? What strategy are they going for? What is the move early on for this team with the injuries? That's coming up next here on Dodgers Dugout Live. What up, Dodgers Nation? D-Mag here. I'm here to remind you that if you have not yet, be sure to subscribe to the number one Dodgers YouTube channel for all latest Dodgers news, rumors, hype videos, interviews, breakdowns, live streams, and more all year long. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you really want to help the channel out, smash that like button. Also, you will not be eligible for any of our giveaways unless you are subscribed to the channel. So all you need to do to be eligible for all of our giveaways is just make sure that you are subscribed. We just gave away a brand new authentic Mookie Betts jersey valued at over $350. And we got tons of giveaways coming this offseason. So be sure to be subscribed so you are eligible to win. And as always, think blue, bleed blue, and please subscribe. I love it. You guys know I always appreciate the humor, the wild takes out here. My craziest take of the day is One Eye Dragon says the Dodgers are going 158 and four. That's definitely Four a fire two. take. Binky kind of tops that by saying Grove Cy Young Dark Horse. That's another four fire two. take. I don't think that's very realistic. I think I think you have a about as good a shot as that. Lux is hot dog water. Okay, guys, ease up on the Gavin Lux hate. That's for sure. Consider it smash. Thanks, IB Stroke. You definitely hit that like button for your Los Angeles Dodgers. Hit a like button if you want to see them win today. If you want to see Otani continue that multi-game hit streak. By the way, yesterday he extended it to five. It's only a couple games back from the record. It's eight. You also have D. Gordon and Duke Snyder with that record. Eight multi-hit games. So he's on his way. It was the first time in his career he's actually reached that feat. Mr. Seabed, Cubs are a couple of pitching injuries from collapsing in the National League Central. Basement, yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's some talent, but for sure, bong water is useful, though. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Uh, Jack, over on YouTube, if you want Lux or Altman to get it going, we just got to give them a standing ovation. That's a fire take. It's a fire take, of course, if you don't know what Jack, what Jake, Jake, Jake Hillesey is referring to is uh, <laughs> is that uh, the Angels they gave 
Anthony Rendon that standing ovation, and uh, he's had a lot more success. So we saw Trey Turner last year with the Phillies. He was struggling. He gets the ovation. How about this? So Anthony Rendon, before the standing ovation that the Anaheim Angels fans gave him, he was over 20 with one walk and one run. After the standing ovation, six for 18, one walk, two doubles, and three runs. So cricket bat plus standing ovation could turn Gavin Lux into an all-star <laughs> this season. So I'm definitely here for that. It's a great idea, Jake. Really appreciate that take over there we got carnivorous lunar activity dmac it's too late to ease up lux has been destroyed down here yeah i mean dodgers fans they don't mess around that's for sure Trey turner same story rendon 2024 mvp yeah i mean he wants less baseball games so that's what he said a couple months ago anthony rendon wants less baseball games i think what angels fans want is less years on his contract less money on his contract because that has been a buzz so far but hey hey he's gotten it going so give him credit todd cases i don't care luck's my favorite dodger i love that i love that man you got to stick with your guys and i appreciate that go glass now yeah glass now he's on the bump tonight so we haven't talked about this guy yet so i want to run through this so the dodgers they acquired reliever connor brogdon and a little backstory on him philadelphia the phillies they designated brogdon for assignment last week brogdon was a 10th round pick for the phillies back in 2017 he had a 355 era 24.1 strikeout rate a 7.9 walk rate in 142 innings from 2020 to 2023 then he really was starting to lose it in philly when they were shuffling him back and forth from the minors they did a couple of times in the last three seasons and you saw that strikeout rate start to fall off it dropped to 20.5 percent the walk rate spiked to 10.2 percent he gave up five home runs in 29 innings of work and you also saw the velocity dip too the velocity has gone down on the fastball so they optioned him down to triple a last june and then to start the season he has given up six earned runs in just two innings give that grand slam in three games with a 27 era so last season like i said 20.5 percent strikeout rate the walk rates up the velocities down five homers in 29 innings this season off to a terrible start with the phillies six earned runs in two innings at 27 era but guess what i'm happy we had a move and it didn't include cash the dodgers they end up giving a road blaze there in that deal and la got him as an international signing back when he was 18 and he was with the dodgers dominican summer league squad and yeah you got to give him something to get something and here's what's going to happen we know with brogdon what we see with lamette what we see with chris matt He'll end up throwing five shutout innings with the Dodgers. He'll be really good. He'll go out there and be effective, and then they're just going to DFA him, right? So that's probably going to be the move. I mean, four-seam, change-up, cutter, he fits the profile, but that is what you need to know, and I think it really speaks to what the Dodgers are doing on. Earlier, they were able to get Chris Matt back, but they're really playing this DFA game, and they're trying to fill out innings out of the bullpen while they get their – guys back guys like Bruce Zargratterall and Blake Trinan so could this guy be this year's Ryan Brazier I'm not so sure I'm not so sure I see a Ryan Brazier I mean you see the parallels he struggles early on and then he goes to the Dodgers and maybe they fix him if anyone can they can do it but that's what you need to know now coming up we're going to finish the show on an episode of a little segment of designated Twitter so designated Twitter I asked you guys over on the X, what is your biggest concern, your biggest Dodgers concern so far to start the season? Wow, this one kind of went off. So let's start with LA underscore Baba Yaga. People complaining about the bottom of the lineup have never watched another team play, LOL. We got Lux is not cutting it for me. That's from Born Center 562. Benny, I don't have any really enjoying the hell out of this team. John Fatland over on the X says, starting pitching, Mookie needing to play shortstop and Outman, Taylor, and Lux slow start. Warm weather will fix some of those problems. 
problems, but not shortstop. That's a depression, a desperation move by the Dodgers that needs to be addressed by a shortstop acquisition or put Rojas there permanently. Yeah, I mean, you guys know how I feel about that. I don't love the idea of Mookie going wire to wire as the Dodgers starting shortstop. His biggest strength is what he can do at the plate by generating offense, hitting home runs, getting extra base hits, getting on base for Shohei to knock him in. And I just don't want to see any Dodgers fans complaining if Mookie struggles in the postseason after having to play an entire year for the first time in his professional career at the big league level at 31 playing shortstop. So that's why I don't love it. But Daryl Jackson Jr., bottom of the lineup and the bullpen. We got Dave the Spreadsheet Roberts from Stephen Howe. Uh, O-Dog says last three in the batting order and Stone's pitching. I think for me, the last three in the batting order are, are definitely a concern. I mean, yesterday they go five for nine. The five for nine for the Dodgers went three for 17. But it's not just the lack of production. It's the inability to put the ball in play consistently and the strikeouts racking up. Because just think about how this would play up in October. What would happen? What would be the outcome? It's the classic Dodgers postseason loss. You're just watching them get mowed down, strikeout after strikeout against – postseason level pitching and that can happen you need to find a way to get the bat on the ball and make something happen that's why it's my biggest concern it's just not just the lack of production but the inability to put the ball in play and also for me it's almost like a pre-concern is the starting pitching because like i told you earlier when this team gets five innings of work from their starter they win most of their games when you get six they're undefeated can you keep these guys healthy and effective for a long stretch? Can you avoid major injuries? Bobby Miller, he had a setback start. He just was not his best day. I still believe in him. Gavin Stone, the FIP is really good. The peripherals that really point to some positive regression are there, but he still needs to get the results. So is the starting pitching going to be there wire to wire? Are they going to avoid injuries? But let's read more of your concerns. A lot of people say in the bottom of the lineup, Tim Garrity says the infield other than Freeman. Yeah, here's the thing about the infield, right? Sure. Is the infield defense suspect? It is, but that's what happens when you're playing multiple guys at a position. That's what happens when you're playing a right fielder and a second baseman at the shortstop spot. That's what happens when you're playing a DH and a first baseman at third base. So it's not a surprise. I don't know why anyone would be shocked. And here's the thing. Yes, Mookie has grayed out as a round league average at the shortstop position, but still, course of a whole year, I like Mookie at the plate. DMAC, do you notice all Dodgers opponents seem to be playing gold glove defense? Cole, yeah, he had some incredible plays yesterday. Byron Buxton, Robin Freddie Freeman just laying out. I mean, Byron Buxton, if he's healthy, he's just so fun to watch defensively. And then you saw the plays that the Cubs made for sure. But that's what happens when it's every team's World Series, right? You're playing World Series level defense. J Bullet TC, DMAG, Dodgers were right for giving up Pepio. He's cheeks now, and fans were saying we gave too much. Wait, wait, wait. J Bullet, are you kidding me? Because Ryan Pepio, Ryan Pepio went off. My, my friend, Mr. Ryan Pepio, I was actually going to, we're going to do an all baseball show here pretty soon. Where we talk about other teams outside of the Dodgers. I was going to have him as my first guest because I love me some Ryan Pepio and he was outstanding in his last start with the Dodgers. I mean, what did he go? Let's see. He ends up the Rays won three to two and yeah, Pepio struck out 11 hitters, man. 11 hitters. He allowed three hits and no runs, struck out 11. So, hey, a lot of Pepio in his Stepio in Tampa Bay. But a couple more comments here. I'll do some walk-off shots right here. Lux made a great play the other day, and I've watched that Kike Hernandez catch on repeat. Todd K. Yeah, no, for sure. Miggy at short. Mookie at second. That's from Steven Cronin over on Facebook. But, yeah, I think for me, kind of final thought here, kind of the walk-off shot is that this team, as far as the concerns go, it's still the Dodgers versus the Dodgers. They're either going to be their worst enemy or they're going to figure things out. But the truth is, internally, you have the talent to beat any team in a five-game series and a seven-game series. It's just a matter of going out there and playing up to your best abilities and what you're capable of. And I think that early on, I think the Dodgers are using the bottom of the lineup as a way to assess. Because, look, let's, let's not forget, if you're looking to add someone to the bottom of the lineup, they're easier to acquire. You got Rosario last season for the Guardians for a washed-up Thor, right? 
a center guard with center gone. So you can still acquire guys. So I think that you need to give the bottom of the lineup extended run just so you know what you have to address at the deadline. And I guarantee you they will. Someone said Willie Adamas, if he's available, Dodgers have been interested in him for years. So I'm sure they will go after him if he becomes truly available. Uh, we got a $10 super chat. Wow, appreciate that. That's a comment of the show. $10 from Wackham Sticks. For a moment, can we all just remember the fact that Otani is a pitcher? The guy is an absolute freak. It's incomprehensible what he's able to do on a baseball diamond. I was talking to Ken Griffey Jr. about this, and he says, Look, we just didn't have guys like this. I was a great player. I hit 630 home runs. I never thought about pitching. I never thought about going out there and being a top five pitcher. And you talk to players from different generations, and they say, just doesn't make sense. So if he can come back and be an ace level pitcher, hey, the Dodgers, they got this guy for an absolute bargain. But that is going to be this episode of Dodgers Dugout Live. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Comment done down below so you're eligible for all of our giveaways. We're giving away a Mookie Betts authentic Dodgers jersey once we hit 90,000 subscribers. To be eligible, you just have to do two things. Things. Subscribe and comment done down below. We'll be back later. We're going to do a post game show tonight after the Dodgers Twins matchup. So be locked in for that right as the game ends. You guys are the best fans in the game. We can't tell you how much we appreciate you here at Dodgers Nation. Always drop those comments. Let's do some, let's do some walk off shots right here. Some walk off shots. Thanks, DMAC. Thanks, BT Fouts. We got Dunn from Nando. Kelly over on YouTube. She says, Thanks, DMAC. You make my morning coffee better. Hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. By the way, Willie Stargell once said that trying to hit Sandy Koufax was trying to like drinking coffee with a fork. So every time I hear the word coffee, I think of trying to drink coffee with a fork. We got uh, Moo We says rushing is still in double A and he's 19. He's not ready. We got uh, we got some more over here. Thanks, d Roy Estrada. Appreciate you guys. As always, remember, nothing brings us together quite like Dodger baseball. And until next time, think blue, 